And now I would like to address the issue, how do you accelerate protons to extremely high speeds, almost approaching the speed of light? And that is also something for which Ernest Lawrence is credited. In the early days, it was done in a cyclotron, which I will describe to you now. The cyclotron consists of a chamber, which is called a D. This is one D, and here is another D. These are conducting chambers. If you look from the side, it would look like so. This is the left chamber, and this is the right chamber, and all of this is in vacuum. And let's assume that we have a magnetic field coming out of the board, like so. so let's revisit our 1 MeV proton. Suppose I release in this chamber here a 1 MeV proton, and I know the speed with which it comes out, because the 1 MeV proton had a speed, oh, you still see it there, 1.4 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. We also know that in a one Tesla field, let's make this one Tesla, that the radius is going to be 15 centimeters. You see it up there. So what is this proton going to do? It's going to do this. But when it gets there, a potential difference is introduced between these two Ds. So that this is low pot high potential and this is a low potential. And so you're going to get an electric field now in this gap, in this direction, and so this proton is being accelerated. And let's suppose that the difference in potential is 20 kilovolts. Then this proton will gain in electric, in kinetic energy, it will gain kinetic energy 20 kilo electron volts. That's the way electron volt is, de is defined. And so you start off with one MeV, so when it has crossed this gap, it is now 1.02 MeV, 20 keV more. The radius now is larger. And so when it comes out here and it makes a circle, the radius now is 1% higher than 15 centimeters. But when it gets to this part of the D, this potential difference is reversed, and so the electric field is again in this direction, in the direction of the proton, and so it is accelerated again by 20 kilo electron volts. Now the radius, of course, is even larger. And so very gradually, every time that it reaches the gap, the potential difference is changed in direction to accelerate the proton, and so it gradually spirals out then to the largest radius that you have. So during one full rotation, it gains 20 kilo electron volt once and 20 kilo electron volt twice, so it gains 40 kilo electron volts. And so the electric fields are doing the work. They accelerate the particles. Magnetic fields cannot accelerate. Magnetic fields can change the direction, but they can do no work on the particles. So the magnetic fields confine the particles. And that means you have to switch this field twice per full rotation, make sure that the E field is in this direction, but when the proton comes here, the E field has to be in that direction. 